On this episode of Oz Off Road TV, it's all about the Port Macquarie region. We see some four-wheel drive action in what seems like the Amazon jungle, travel a beach track that's actually a public road, camp out in river and beachside spots, get the jet ski out for a blast, and try out a different type of hamburger at the actual hamburger factory. All of this effort and adventure only to end up at a pub with no beer. We are standing here at Port Macquarie on the New South Wales Mid-North Coast. There's a pretty good reason for it too, because we've got a brand new Oz Off-Road store here, right in Port Macquarie. And they tell me it's the four-wheel drive capital of the world. But we needed a really good tour guide, so we've got the beautiful Bree who's joined us for this episode. Bree, you know your way around here. You were born up here. Yeah, yeah, I'm a bit of a local. I'm, I'm keen to get back out and check out some of the tracks. They reckon there's a few challenges as well, so we're going to go and check it out. You can come along with us. We're going to call it the Beauty and the Beast episode of Oz Off Road TV. How dare they call you a beast, Bree? <laughs> Let's be honest, I couldn't pull that hat off. Camping down on an old bush track. A four-wheel drive, yeah, I like it like that. The weekend comes and now it's time to go. Oz Off Road, it's time for the show. We have put together a pretty good crew for this adventure. Brianna Vado, better known as Bree, heads up Brunette Driven and is a highly respected member of the four-wheel drive community. She has presented her own four-wheel drive programs and has shown that the girls can play this four-wheel drive game just as good as the boys can. She's brought along her trusted GU for this trip, so we can't wait to see the big rig tackle some of the big tracks as well. Also along for the ride is my young bloke Robert, who is the manager of the Oz Off-Road business, a very handy diesel mechanic and experienced four-wheel driver himself, and he'll be steering the very capable Oz Off-Road Ford Ranger. Our Port Macquarie store manager Josh joins us in his Amarok to show us around and to give us a bit of a hand. And of course I've brought the ram up for a dance around some of the tight tracks in these parts, and brought along my faithful mate Clancy, who will be riding shotgun for a few days as well. On this three-day adventure, we head off from our new Oz Off-Road Port Macquarie store and search for an elusive four-wheel drive track that runs through a hard-to-find creek that's hidden amongst a maze of tracks in the Cancross State Forest. Set up base camp on the banks of the Hastings River at Rawdon Island, take a run up a special beachside track from Port Macquarie right up to Crescent Head, continue on to a top camp spot at Hat Head, suss out a very special buffalo farm at Guy Creek just south of Maxville and then head out west to check out the famous pub at Taylor's Arm. guys just up here on the left hand side we'll take Scrubby Creek Road we'll hit some tracks down through here and see how we go. Have you been in here before or been a while or what's the go? No duck I haven't been down through here but um, I've heard there's some pretty good um, full drive tracks down through here. A um, bit of a creek crossing that hopefully we can get a chance to get through to but um, it's pretty rugged out here but we'll have a go at it. Oh we've got Bree with us she's an expert ain't you Bree? Yeah, uh, Port has been known to have a few good tracks, but I actually haven't done this one, but um, I'm sure we'll be able to sniff around and find it out. Yeah, hopefully we can actually um, find this little um, river creek where we can go for a bit of a drive up the creek and see what it's like. Yeah, all the mail I'm getting is pretty tight, so um, anyway, it'll be a bit of fun. Better than being on the highway, isn't it? Gee, a river creek sounds like a pretty big creek to me. I reckon Josh knows we're in for it though. I was wondering why he left his personal rig back at Oz Off Road and jumped in with Rob for the day. Alright, it looks like everything's changing up in here. It looks like we're getting, hopefully, down to that creek track. What's everyone reckon? Well, we're definitely going downhill, eh? That we are. Yeah, it definitely starts to look a bit interesting down the bottom here. Cancross State Forest covers an area of about 2,200 hectares and is located in the Mid-North Coast region not far from Port Macquarie. It's like a cross between the Amazon jungle and a tropical rainforest with a maze of tracks running everywhere. It's a bit overgrown in here too. Oh, good thing you got the wide part, Doc. You can clear it out for me. Mate, this is getting tighter than my belt buckle, I can tell you. Cairn Cross is also the home of what's called the Elephant Trail and also has tracks that lead to pretty special lookouts. Today though, it's all about us trying to find an entrance into this creek track that we've been told about. We're 
got a bit of a little creek crossing up here. Yeah, mate, she's pretty thick here. I think we found the Amazon jungle. It looks that way. You're not wrong. At least we found a creek. It means we're on the right track. Yeah, let's hope you're right, Bree. I did say there were a maze of tracks with it being very thick and dense. It's a good thing we have a little trick up our sleeve, though, to help us find what we're looking for. Where it goes up there as well. Yeah, so here's the loop, that's where we walked to. Oh, it's thick. Yeah, yeah. So it's thick up there. See in there, um, so you can start to see dry creek bed. I mean, there's, there's wet there. Mm. But, but it's open in there. Yeah, see, but it feels just like we're so close mm. to it. This is the ultimate in just research here, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> For a cameraman, our man Gav is a pretty good drone pilot, and as he flies the drone below the tree line, it looks like he's found what we're looking for. Now we just have to find the entry into this elusive track. Got another little pretty creek crossing here, and then it looks like there's a bit of a, a bit of a mud hole to follow it. Yeah, it's oh, the mud hole's a bit. <laughs> Uh, a bit slippery in that mud hole. Slippery muddy stuff is right up our alley and at least we're having a bit of fun while we're out trying to find the entry into this creek. That mud hole does have a bit of depth to it, doesn't it? Yeah, she's nice and slippery. I'll just chop it up a bit for you, Bree. See, she's a bit more slippery now. I'm not going to lie, I didn't expect so much moisture around. I don't think that's the last of the mud though, Bree. I think putting up the drone has paid off though, as I think we're getting closer to finding a way into this creek track. Best we keep an eye open though, for some sort of side track entry. It's got to be here somewhere. It's nice down here, eh? Look at that. How yeah, clear the water is. <laughs> that's not real. Maybe that's the four-wheel drive track. That Maybe there is turn right in. Yeah, you should turn right and go <laughs> up in there. That could be the one. Gee, we keep crossing this creek. The entry must be around here somewhere. Oh, it's actually kind of nice. If you had a bit more water in it, it'd nearly be a good swim spot. Not bad. That looks interesting. Yeah. Just hold on here, guys. I think we might have found something here. Yeah, Roger that. Let's go and have a look. She's steep. Yeah. Well, it took us all day to find it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, cool. This looks a bit slippery, so. <laughs> I am wearing Crocs, you know. Down here and that away. Yeah, down here, and I reckon, yeah, this is the track that we've been, you know, I told you about this morning, so we finally found it. What's the worst that can happen? That's it. <laughs> Where do we start? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm on my way. Typical, here's the rain, just in time. <laughs> it's pretty specky this, down in this creek. Low range first gear, she's pretty steep. A bit exciting. Nice and easy, how'd you do it? Here we go. Little leaves around them. Bring the first car up, we're gonna slide a little bit. Okay, son, you blokes have found the way in. Let's see if you can push the Ranger through this little tight gateway. That's a cheeky wheel really. there. Watch that tree beside you. Might have to just give it a bit of a bump up off the hill. Yeah, I'll have a real go now. like that much, it's just to get your rear tire of that just route, yeah. And just bump it. That'll do ya. And let's just a bit of bump. 
Yeah, hit now, yep. There we go. There you go. That's it. Easy. Yeah, real easy. I wouldn't go off too soon, mate. You still have the rest of this creek to get through yet, son. Come down through this way, man. Live panels are in your hands, Josh. Two. Mate, this track is something else. <laughs> this would have to be one of the best tracks I've ever seen. Gee, I'd have to agree with you there, Robert. Whoever identified this stretch of creek being any sort of a track certainly knew what they were looking out for. You'll have to come up high and then hook around. That's it deeper than it looks. <laughs> Beautiful three. I'm through that bit. Time to see what that ream's made out of. How many rams do you reckon have done this track? Oh, pretty sure this is going to be the first one. I think you're on the money, Josh. I've never been that bright, and I don't think any other dingbats around here would try and get a ram down in these parts. When you get down the bottom of the hill, just here, just go a little bit to your left, and then swing him around to your right. Yeah, just around to the right, no problem. Should have towed the van down here just to make it a bit more challenging. Yeah, Woohoo! Powerful mirrors, not just for shopping centre car parks. Right on your side, duck. What this side? You guys think like that much? Yeah, I know, Clancy. What the hell are we doing down here? Just swing him hard right if you can. That's it. Where am I going here, mate? Come straight through that. Well, I reckon you can tell people I'm the first ram to go through here. Yeah, I think next time you should bring the van down as well. Fair dinkum. He's a dead set comedian, this bloke. Okay, Bree, if I can get through, this will be a walk in the park for you. Alright, I guess it's my turn. Let's see how we go. Stay a little bit high on top of that rock and then swing him to your right. Oh, I'm getting covered from water off the rooftop. Pretty chewed up from the boys. And if you hear my airlock going off, I'm going to leak my airline, so excuse that. Yeah, he might have given a bit of, bit of boot there. You've got plenty of room. So far, so good there, Bree. Well, she's a tight one, that's for sure. Duck did well to get the ram through here because I feel like I'm sucking it in the troll. Yep, I was right. In fact, a walk in the park would be harder than this. Geez, you made it look easy. It's been a fun day finding our way into that creek, but it's getting on a bit, and with a break in the rain, it's time to think about heading back to our base camp. And how good is this camp spot? 
Rawdenvale Farm is an owner-occupied 94-acre private waterfront property and we have actually been based here for the last few days. It features excellent fishing, crabbing, boating and a whole lot more. Located opposite the Rawdon Creek Nature Reserve, it has pristine waterways to explore and with the Hastings River running all the way to the ocean at the breakwall at Port Macquarie, there's plenty to see and do here. Rawdon Vale Farm caters for small and large groups and owners Scott and Margaret are perfect hosts. A big thanks to Brooke from Hip Camp for putting us onto this one. Check it out for yourself at hipcamp.com or download the Hip Camp app. Did I mention that Rawdon Vale Farm is pet friendly? Well, I think it's fair to say that this place is Clancy approved. Well, after constant rain that's continued into the morning, it's looking like we're in for a soggy day as the rain seems to be going nowhere. But just like that, the sun poked its face through the clouds to give us a little break so we could cook ourselves some brekkie. Mate, we're going all out. The effort's unbelievable, making an egg rolls. You can have cheese though. For an extra 20 cents, I'll throw some barbecue sauce, all right? It's hard to believe that we are camped less than 30 minutes away from our Port Macquarie store. A misty morning in beautiful green country surroundings, brekkie by the river, the wildlife just waking up from their evening slumber with the day waking up at its own pace. Jeez, it's peaceful here. Everybody is up. I think I've lost my local credit because you've taken me to a bit of a camp that I never knew existed and it's a cracker of a spot. I'm so glad you guys brought me here. Not bad, eh? It's, um, even in the rain, like it's raining this morning, but it's even pretty good, isn't it? Like at uh, a hip camp, mate, they've got spots all over the country, but this one was pretty handy for us. Had that jet ski go this morning, mate. I noticed you got it out for an early burn, son. Yeah, actually it was a bit brisk out there, but no, nah, jet ski was flying along and oh, it's a good way to see the river. So, Bree, what's our plan today? We'll get out of the farm, we've got to drop that jet ski back to Oz off road. Uh, what are we up to today? Where are we heading? Well, we're going to go drop the ski off, get some permits, um, jump on the ferry at North Shore, and we're going to start making our way towards Crescent Head and hopefully find some beach driving and a, a little bit less rain. Mate, must have been good growing up here. I mean, it's a good part of the world. Honestly, it's my favourite part of the world. What's the plugger? Oh no. <laughs> Alright, so we've come down to the centre of Port Macquarie um, to get ourselves some beach permits so we can do some beach driving in this there. glorious yeah. weather. <laughs> Long story short, um, they don't do anything in person these days. It's all online, so at least we've got the information for that. But well, I just feel like this whole trip, my local local yeah, knowledge. I'm starting to think has... it might not be a maybe a local elsewhere. Maybe not Port Macquarie. <laughs> Port Macquarie is a coastal city located on the mid-north coast of New South Wales, about 390 k's north of Sydney and around 570 kilometres south of Brisbane. The city is located on the Tasman Sea coast at the mouth of the Hastings River at the eastern end of the Oxley Highway. Port Macquarie, also simply known as Port, has a very rich history and was first explored by the British in 1818 when an expedition led by John Oxley reached the Pacific Ocean from inland New South Wales. Oxley named the location after the Governor of New South Wales, Lachlan Macquarie, and in 1821, Port Macquarie was founded as a penal settlement, replacing Newcastle as a destination for convicts who had committed secondary crimes in New South Wales. 
Although Port possesses large shopping centres, modern clubs and restaurants, it certainly hasn't lost its historical charm, with many old buildings and churches still standing today. It's where the country meets the sea, and being surrounded by water, it's no wonder it's one of Australia's more popular tourist destinations. Problems, but it's still raining. Bit of a shame about the rain, but what have you got in store for us anyway? Off North Shore, there's a beach called Queens that you can drive along, um, but it's renowned for being pretty soft, and I know the tides currently aren't on our side, so with the caravan on, I think we're gonna take a bit of a detour and go down Point Plummer Road and do a little bit of off-roading there. Yeah, sounds right. Don't need to be digging the caravan out of the soft sand today, do we? Yeah, look, not in this weather. Just a heads up, the potholes are normally pretty big on Point Plummer Road. Point Plummer Road is basically a 16 kilometre track that runs behind the sand dunes along the coast from Port Macquarie to Point Plummer. From there though, it's basically sealed for around 15 kilometres all the way to Crescent Head. There are some camping options along the way with a few side tracks accessing the beach. I've got to say to you, Bree, you weren't wrong about some of the potholes on this road. They're pretty big, they're a good test for our caravan here. Yeah, it's a... Uh... Definitely not the most maintained road, but that's why I thought you might like it. Test out the van a bit. Yeah, I'd rather be towing the caravan through here than down the M2 in Sydney. Believe it or not, we're probably going faster anyway. the tight squeeze through there. Like you're saying Doug, you should be used to the tight spaces by now after yesterday. Yeah, I reckon so. We probably don't want it much tighter than this though. Even on a rainy day, just how good is this road? I don't know what you'd think, but for me, whether it's a dirt road in the outback or a surfside track running behind the sand dunes, anywhere that is not near the big smoke does it for me. This track has huge potholes and the going is slow. It's just the way we like it though. No hustle or bustle here. Oh, and the fact that most of this is four wheel drive only, it makes it all that much better. With most side tracks being on the right hand side for beach access, we tripped over a little track on the left and it looked to lead down to some water. So we thought we'd better jump out and go and take a look. What we found was mother nature at its best. How good does this look? Throw a line in here Josh, you might catch something here. I don't know what will be in there but you know, you might get something. I'm not going to lie, I really gained put shame on this trip with local knowledge because I never knew this existed, I honestly just drive straight past it. That's okay Bree. you haven't done that bad and I'm sure your best tour guide work is still to come. Gee, time flies when you're out doing this stuff and with plenty still on the plan for the day, the day seems to be getting away from us. So it's time to get back onto the blacktop and head a little further north. But not before a little bit more mud, eh? Get on. To see rolling hills or city streets, ocean to ocean and all in between. It's out there just waiting on you and me. They get in, we got no plans. Good things come to those who can. Well, after a late top lunch stop, it's time to bid farewell to Josh as he has a few things to do back at Oz Off Road. 
So be sure to pop in and say good day to him if you're going past the Oz Off Road store in Port Macquarie. All right, guys, I know we sort of spoke about doing a bit of a beach run, but it's getting on in the day. So I think it might be best just to head to Hat Head. I, there's still plenty of things to do there, but I think the beach run, we might have to give it a miss. Yeah, copy that. Probably best too, because we've got to set up a new radio tomorrow as well. So I'm uh, going to do a bit of work for that. What happened to the day? Just disappeared in front of our eyes. Well, how good's this? After a couple of rainy days, we wake up to a bright light in the sky at the majestic Hat Head Holiday Park. And just in case you were wondering, that big light in the sky was actually the sun. And doesn't it shine a light on this place? Yeah, no, I spent, honestly, a lot of time here. We would either set up here for a few weeks. They were just like beautiful spots. Like I grew up in a big family. I have lots of cousins. The parents loved setting up somewhere that kept us occupied and entertained and Hat Head was perfect for it. I have to give it to this particular area. That's kind of what got me into the whole camping thing. Oh my God, look at that. Looks like Bree's not the only local that's keen on this spot. Check out this big fella. And as David Attenborough would say, the Australian bush kangaroo is far more than your average marsupial. In fact, they're more like an athlete and an animal that can often be spotted playing chicken with cars and trucks. Yeah, I know. It was a pretty average David Attenborough. In the Fair Income Department though, it doesn't surprise me, Bree, that coming to a place like this is what got you into the camping scene. I took both of my kids to places just like this one growing up and they too now work with me in the four-wheel drive camping industry and not only have a real passion and respect for it, they just love getting out in the bush just as much as we do. Do you reckon we should leave some for the others? I reckon, yeah. We're, we're getting a bit greedy now. Full bucket. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, usual catch, son. Never been done for exceeding bag limits, eh? Lucky for us though, I also do another job that helps feed us. Yes, good day there and welcome to the latest edition of the Camping and Off-Road Radio Show, broadcasting through Nine Radio right across Australia. And I'll also be joined here by Bree from Brunette Driven, who's currently working with us on Oz Off-Road TV. And pristine waterways too. The water just looks so inviting. Oh, it's one of my absolute favourites. I'm a little bit biased because I'm a bit of a local. I but, know um, you are a local. You, you, can't, you can't beat it, honestly. Well, couldn't we just hang around here all day? The problem for us, though, is that we have to keep moving and apparently we're off to suss out something completely different. So where are we heading to? A buffalo farm. We're going to go check out some buffaloes. Well, actually, I've never done that before, so it's going to be a little bit interesting. Mate, I've seen them in the Northern Territory, but I didn't even know there was a buffalo farm around here, so we're going to have a look at it. I reckon Cleans might have a bit of fun sussing out the buffalo. They do lunch there, Robert. You might want to get yourself a buffalo burger. I was always thinking about having up a roadkill restaurant myself, Bree. I'll leave uh, the unique meats to you boys. Considering the poor weather and conditions, it's really been a trouble-free trip so far. And right on cue. I've done it again. <laughs> it's turned from a running joke to just facts now, I think. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Hard on the gear. I hit a pretty big stick. Doesn't look good, does it? No. Gavin has somehow hit the smallest stick on the coast and pulled the fuel line off the top of the diesel tank. One of your best. Well done, Gav. Is there not be a clamp or something on it? Yeah, I think it bent the hard line around and ripped oh. the clamp off, but it's cool. God, Gav, you're a bit rough on the gear. I'm good at this, eh? Fixed. Fixed? Fixed. You're the best. Yeah. It must have, like went into it and just when you've driven over it's kicked it. If I do something, I, I do a good job, eh? I don't even know how it got, like that's... Yeah. That's a solid effort. None of you guys are good, man. <laughs> I am. It's amazing. Yeah, good on you, Robert. Better result than your fishing efforts earlier. I know it was a small job this time, but geez, it's handy to have your own diesel mechanic on these trips. What do you reckon, guys? A cheeky little back way to the buffalo farm? Always beats the highway, doesn't it? 
Mate, I've got to be honest with you, I had no idea this was even out here, especially this dirt road either. So, mate, it's in the middle of nowhere now. It's crazy to think we're only just, yeah, just off the highway. Yeah, it's a good thing we let the cameraman come this way. God knows what he'll do to the car on a road like this. I don't mind the, uh, the diesel fragrance that I've brought back into the car with me. <laughs> Gee, Bree's done a great job finding this back way to the buffalo farm. After turning off the highway near Clybucker, we travel along this very scenic dirt road towards Tamban, with a turn off onto a track that's pretty narrow in places with just enough room to get the van through. How good is this for a lazy drive? Old wooden bridges, spectacular views, and all with the sun out, this is going to be quite a nice run all the way to the buffalo farm. Little did we know, we were about to hit a fairly big hurdle that was going to send us backwards, literally. Okay, so um, it looks like we've got to reverse out of this bush track we're in, uh, which would normally not be a problem. However, we do have a pretty large off-road caravan hooked up on the back here. So this will certainly test me out. Um, but anyway, it's either that or we stay down here forever. We'll bleep that part out. This is not going to be good to get around. This isn't good. Not me. I don't have the skills for this. Come look down a bit. We're almost in the tree here. As we try to reverse back up the hill and around a couple of tight turns, things are really starting to warm up. We're going to be hot. Oh, the gauge isn't hot. No, but, the transmission. But the gearbox is definitely getting hot. Yeah. Maybe doesn't sound crap hot. Do you hear that? So I don't know if camera is doing it justice on how bad this corner is and how little room there is, but like, that's impressive. It'll be even more impressive if I can get the thing out of here. I was only joking when I said we could be down here forever. Maybe grab that stick. I've probably scratched all the side of the caravan, but I want to do the car as well. Maybe just hold it here on this road for a minute till I figure out what direction we're going, just so we don't have to do this again on the other road. So we figure out what way we're going to go. I was going to see if you and Gav wanted to lift back down the bottom. I was going to drive you down. <laughs> yeah, well, let's not do that twice. <laughs> yeah, you're probably right, Bree. We certainly don't need to be doing that trick twice in the one day. So after some creative reversing, we are back on track and although we are a little late, we arrive at the buffalo farm in no time at all. At least we missed the lunchtime crowd though. Get a load of this joint. How good is this? It's unbelievable and they've even extended the lunchtime trade for us. Well, we're here with Ian from Ewangoy Creek Buffalo. Mate, thank you very much. Um, Pleasure. Hospitality here, it's unbelievable. What a place this is. Mate, how many acres you got here? 300. 300 acres. Yeah. Now, I was talking to your wife earlier, she said it was once a dairy farm, a pretty large dairy farm that went on for like 100 years. Yeah, yeah, it has been. It's The history of it is dairy, yeah. Buffalo farm, I've got to be honest with you, I've seen them up in the outback Queensland, I've seen them in, around the Gulf, I've seen them in the Northern Territory. I've never seen them here. You were telling me earlier you actually had them in Carajong, northwest of Sydney. Yep, sure did. Had them there for a while. What do you do with buffalo? Meat, 
Well, we do the meat, but predominantly we're on the dairy side, so we milk them, yeah. I milk them, my wife makes cheese and gelato and stuff from them, yeah. Is that right? Have you always done this, what, always into farming or? No, 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 it was a lifestyle change. Yeah, right, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Why buffalo? We were actually in Italy and had some mozzarella and didn't know what it was, so. Yeah. And then when we got back home again, my wife was a rep around Sydney and um, couldn't really find it, so she had a harebrained idea to buy a buffalo and tell me about it later. Yeah, right, okay, yeah. <laughs> okay. What are they like, mate? I mean, I mean, everyone sees the buffalo on Crocodile Dundee. Do you do these things like? Yeah, I can assure you. I, mean, I, work, saw, mate. <laughs> I did see you calling them before, and they they did follow you. But yeah. what are they like? Are they a tame animal? I mean, they're like a beast, obviously. But they are. They're tough. Um, but there's only six species of them in the world. Yeah. Of the water buffalo, they all originate in India, but they're ours are mainly Italian, and we do that through a, um, a research station in Darwin that we import semen out of Italy and run a breeding program. Yeah, right, okay. We change our bull every three years. And, yeah. When we got here, they were just like in the water, they swim like me, they sort of just get in there and go and sit there. <laughs> Why do they do that? They just suggest how they cool off? Or yeah, yeah, I think it's get their body temperature down a bit, but yeah. they use the mud and that too for like repellent against ticks and things like that, yeah. They're certainly different. Are there many buffalo farms around? No, not a lot. There's only two in New South Wales. Um, uh, I think there's only one left in Queensland now. Yep. Uh, four in Victoria, one in South Australia, and one's trying to crack off in WA. Now you've got, we've mentioned the cafe, which is, it's actually a bit bigger than a cafe, I'd reckon. Like, it's a pretty big, almost a restaurant, really. Mate, uh, obviously this sort of place here, you'd have people come from far and wide to eat here. It's so yeah. peaceful. Yeah, it's, um, it's pretty well visited. We can seat just over 80 on the deck. Yep. And a few inside if we want, and plenty more on the grass if we need to. Yeah, unbelievable. And you, and you just started to do some live entertainment. So there's a bit of a stage area down the yeah, back yeah, here. Yeah, we just knocked that up for one of the local yeah. kids that was yeah. used to work for us. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, so, right. Uh, does he? Yeah, yeah. He goes well. Blind pretty. He's yeah. Man, is yeah. Okay. So up and coming. Uh, and you do you do cold beers now, don't you? Now we do. Yep. We've got a license here to serve alcohol. So yeah. Well done. It's something different. I mean, and then oh, there'd be that many people driving up the. The M1 between Sydney and Brisbane, straight past here, wouldn't know it was here. No, that's it. We're only six kilometres off the highway, so it's uh, it's not a long way off the highway. But it's, it's almost like Yellowstone, <laughs> John Dutton. Eh? <laughs> if you're ever travelling through the mid-north coast, be sure to turn off at Yuungai and check out the Yuungai Creek Buffalo Farm. The guys are very accommodating, the food's great, and the entire place is simply an experience all of its own. There they come, here they come. <laughs> They're strong, aren't they? Yeah, that one. <laughs> God, you got some big snozzes yeah, yeah. on you. Yeah. All right, guys, so that was a little bit different. Actually, quite a nice little place for lunch, wasn't it? I must admit, it's one of the juiciest beef burgers I've, I think I've ever had. That would have been good if it was beef. If it was buffalo, sir. Huh? Oh, still not, not too bad. If it makes you feel any better, I kind of thought the gelato I was eating was normal, not realising it was made from buffalo milk. You two are kidding, aren't you? Did you think we'd be eating chicken and seafood? It was a buffalo farm? Like, hello? Alright guys, last leg of the trip. Pub with no beer, what do you reckon of that one? Look, I'm going to be honest with you, there is no way I would go to a pub with no beers. I'd grab them a quick call just to make sure they had some. The pub with no beer is located at Taylor's Arm, about 20 kilometres west of Maxville. It oozes with Aussie bush character, and it lays claim to being the pub from the famous Slim Dusty song, Pub with no beer, as Slim Dusty grew up in this area. However, this is disputed by the Lees Hotel in Ingham, North Queensland, who say they are the inspiration for the song after a group of servicemen drank the place dry one night in around 1943. I'm not sure who was right, but what I can tell you is that the Taylor's Arm is a great Aussie pub, friendly staff with even friendlier locals and camping right across the road. It even has a beer church. How's this place feel, Brie? Got a uncomfortable vibe, but you kind of start to relax the more you get in here and immerse yourself with empty beer cans. <laughs> As you know, we love nothing more than a bush pub, so we might have to get ourselves up to Wingham and try the beer out there as well. But for us at the moment, this will just do us fine. What a great place to wind up our Port Macquarie North Coast trip. Well, folks, that's a wrap on this edition of Oz Off-Road TV. The Buffalo Burger King. What do you think, mate? Well, Port Macquarie had it all. Four-wheel driving, jet skiing, camping, and good burgers. Did you flush the jet ski and give it a wash after that? Or? 
Uh, yeah, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Our tour guide, Bree, here from Brunette Driven. But Bree, thank you for showing us around your part of the world. How good is it here? Yeah, it's honestly one of my favourite places, as you guys know why now. But we've done a bit of travelling around here, but it's been a pleasure, so thanks for having me. I think you did invent some of those tracks. I don't think they were really tracks that you uh, touched uh, We Talk just wanted to test out the ram. Anyway, we tested all the cars out. We've done really well. Look, folks, we've loved it up here, this part of the world, the mid-north coast of New South Wales. It's a great spot. If you're in this region and you need something for your four-wheel drive or you need a bit of camping gear, check out our new store, Oz Off-Road at Port Macquarie. Uh, you'll find it in Morton Street, Port Macquarie. Subscribe to the channel. Remember what we say, your adventure starts when you turn the key in the ignition. So we'll see you next time on Oz Off-Road TV. Camping down on a low bush track. A four-wheel drive, yeah, I like it like that. The weekend comes and now it's time to go. Oz Off-Road, time for the show.